Good day, everyone. I picked up this uh, steel mate. Um, and what's going to happen here? We'll get it out of here. I'll show you all the components. And then we're going to go get her uh, set up because there's some very important things setting this thing up properly so it's going to work for you. But anyways, it comes in this nice packaging and here's the unit. It does not come with batteries from what I understand. I believe it takes two, uh, those uh, small, what are they, triple A's? Yeah. Um, so it takes two of those, I believe. There you go. So this is the unit. Battery operated and here are the sensors that go onto the tires. When you take this out, uh, the manual has some interesting information on here, um, especially about, it has factory settings for tire pressure and temperatures, but we're going to have to change those. We'll get into that. Um, it comes with two mounting options. So this would be like a, whoop, the rubber fell out here. So it's just like a handlebar mount. I'm most likely going to use this. I think it's going to work fine on the XT. There's also a mount um, with the 3M tape on it. Uh, if you can't put it on the handle bars, maybe you can find another spot. And it comes with this thing here. And some people are like, well, what is this? Well, it's a key to replace the batteries if you ever need to. I think they last a couple years. So that fits in there, but you're thinking, well, okay, so this comes apart, but I don't know, how do I work this? But this thing, it actually splits in two. And then if you have to, I'm not going to take the batteries out of here, but if you have to, there's a, uh, I guess kind of like a washer here. And I'll explain why that washer's there in a second. That washer, if you had to take this apart, you have to take that washer out. And then this hooks on uh, both sides. So now you have the leverage to undo it if required. But we're not gonna be using that for a bit, I hope. I mean, I'll probably do a follow-up. I will do a one-year follow-up on this if it lasts the year. If it doesn't, I'll still do a follow-up. Um, oh, so we have that. Um, oh, now in this little, uh, I don't know why they give these carrying cases, like whenever you're going to use it, but in here, okay, so they give you three of these little, um, I guess they're nuts. <laughs> uh, they give you a spare washer <clears throat> that I just showed you when I removed it. And so what these are for... Okay, oh, sorry, before I tell you what these are for, there's also these, um, I guess, water dust caps. So just imagine the valve stem on your motorcycle. Oh, and by the way, really these are, these sensors are meant for the steel valve stems, not the rubber ones. So a tubeless tire, most likely. <clears throat> but anyways, this would go onto the stem. And then you would put this uh, nut on. And then the sensor would go on. And then once this is tightened down, you take this and tighten it up against there. I'll show you in the when I do the video. I haven't done it yet. And uh, I haven't tried it, I haven't tested it yet, but we're gonna get th all through it. So that's what all this stuff is for. And oh, they give you a little, little wrench to tighten this up once everything's in place. All will be shown and explained. Something I just thought of right now, so if you're out in the road and if your tire, whoa, if your tire pressure was uh, high or low, you need to have a little wrench around if you have these nuts on, these locking nuts. Otherwise, uh, how are you gonna take this off? Just came to my mind. So keep that in mind. This is something you're gonna have to throw in your uh, pocket or toolkit. <clears throat> and why did I buy this for the XT? Well, if I'm like 50 kilometers away from civilization or more, and I start, I mean, if you get a, flat, a serious flat, you're flat, it's flat, it's flat. But in most cases, there's going to be 
it'll be a slow leak. And I recently kind of experienced almost a, an issue with my tire. Something went in it, but it didn't puncture it. And I got to thinking, you know, normally they are slow leaks. And wouldn't it be nice if you were like, say, 50 or 100 kilometers away from somewhere where you could say, uh-oh, something seems to be going wrong here. And you probably have enough time to uh, get back to civilization or at least a road where there's traffic because often I'll be out where no one's gonna be coming down the road for like ever. And I don't wanna be stuck somewhere, you know, 50 or 100 kilometers away from a road where at least I know someone's gonna come down there in the next hour or something. So that's why I'm gonna try this out. I think it's a good idea, but um, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, they give you a little screwdriver for the battery for the back here. So yeah, we're gonna get this set up. Oh yeah, I believe those are triple A's, two of them. Okay, so let me go get set up. Okay, so I did some investigating here and I figured, you know, probably for now, best spot to mount is probably right in the center here. I mean, we can always change that later on. But yeah, that's where I think I'm gonna put it. So it's just a matter of fitting this clamp around. Uh, make sure the rubber goes on the inside. Actually, I'm gonna start start up here so we can get it started properly. So this just needs to slide in. Should be on the top, like underneath the screw here. And it's just a flathead. And it looks like it's grabbing. Okay, so that's good. We kind of have it started. Now I'm just gonna align the uh, the rubber in here. Get this running around properly. I'm just gonna hold this up here so I can see what I'm doing here. This clamp they give you is quite large. It does look like you can put a uh, driver on here. The screw or the bolt or whatever it does have a proper like a socket head on it also. Make sure this Keep an eye on this rubber stuff back here. It wants to fold over as it's tightening, so. Just so you don't have a big crimp in the rubber back there. Oh, and you're gonna need a five millimeter for the, uh, for the mount here also. So I'm going to try to tuck this under here. And this is really easy to line up. I'm just, I'm going square parallel for the top here. That way it's going to line up with my display. And I'm going to try to tighten this up a little bit more. sure she's centered yeah, push this underneath okay. well, I think that's probably good <clears throat> yep I think we'll be happy with that so, take our Allen key here. Doesn't come with this Allen key, which I said was a five mil, so. I just wanna see if this uh, sits in here properly. See if I like it. I don't know, I think it looks good. Hope you guys think so too. Looks like it's centered. It's fairly straight. I think it's gonna stay in place. So, let me uh, take this off. Let's go get some batteries and uh, start getting this thing fired up. Okay, so for setup purposes, I'm not gonna put it on the mount yet. Um, I'm gonna get the batteries in here. One thing I don't like is that they don't have a little washer on here to stop this little screw from coming out. Um, maybe I can set something up 
Because, yeah, you don't want to lose that. But anyways, uh, let's get the batteries in. Just using some cheap rechargeable ones. It's interesting because, you know, you could use this probably maybe on, say if you had a boat trailer or ATV trailer, your trailer might be important to you for tire pressure. I don't know, something else it could be used for. Let's take this off. All right, it looks like it's, uh, it's already on. Now, all right, I have some important information here. I've been uh, doing some testing before I made my video here. Now, what I've done, so I had this all set up, and then what I did is I took the batteries out, and if you have to replace the batteries in this thing, first of all, the time gets reset, which means, to me, probably all the parameters get reset also. So you're going to have to get familiar with this unit if you want to make it work for you. So I'm going to go through the settings or how to set it. So basically here, you press this and hold it for about five seconds. Then it goes into the setup mode. And right now, what's flashing down here, you might not be able to see. It says PSI. So, And over here, you can select PSI or millibars. I'm going with PSI and then press here again then we're going to go to temperature settings it's either Celsius and then over here you can change it to Fahrenheit so if you like Fahrenheit then press here so the next thing is the parameters for the tires now my front tire the maximum pressure for my weight is Let's see, 22 PSI on my tires. So we're going to set this up to 22. Press this here again. Then the rear on mine is 25 is the max. And then I'll press here. So we have those set. And just so you know how the unit works, it has a 30% plus or minus for pressure so you'll get an alarm or an alert if it goes below 30 percent of your settings or if it's 30 percent above the settings now what we're on here is the temperature uh, setting for an alert now I think when it comes in the packaging it's around 178 or something I'm just gonna leave this at 181 it gets really hot here so that's fine but I mean you can adjust it using this button here but when you have it where you want it set press here again okay now we're back to the time now the time settings up uh, it's on a.m. so I'll press here so now we're on p.m. press here now we're into the time and actually it's getting a little bit late here it's about 6 I'm on p.m. So I like PM, select it, and then right button, we'll go to six. Oops, I went by. If you go by, you can't back up. You have to go all the way around again. All right, what time is it again now? Six, six fourteen. 6.15, yep. Press here. Okay, so we're all set up there. So, we have all our parameters set. I hope this isn't confusing, so hold it down. So we set all the parameter settings. So, now we are setting, well, not... Not that we're setting, we're pairing the sensor with this, with the uh, receiver, I guess, or whatever. And to do that, you have to press this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. So now we're into the pairing mode. And I believe you press here. So now it's, I press that, it's selected the front. And in the kit, 
There's a little F on the sensor here that goes on to the valve stem. Now I checked my tires. Uh, I set it to what I believe it should be, which was a 22 for the front. So now it's a matter of putting this on. And in case I missed showing you, there was a little uh, rubber dust cap, whatever. So I put the dust cap on and the little locking nut down here. So that comes with the kit, the rubber thing and this nut. So you put the rubber on, then the nut, and then we'll screw this on. So it's pretty close. It says 19 right now. Which is an acceptable range. Uh, the front tire, I believe it has a 16 to 22 uh, PSI range. So I'm just going to leave it because um, things are not always accurate. My gauge might be out. This might be out. I don't know. But 19 is totally acceptable. And then what I'm going to do is come back after, which I'm not going to show you, is this little nut here. It needs to be turned up. If you can see it on the video. So I'm going to spin that up and then I'm going to take the rubber thing, put it over. So it's going to seal it together. So now we have to go to the rear one. So we're all set with the front. Press this button. Now we're on the rear. So now I need to go get the rear sensor. Let me grab it. And again, I'm not going to show you on the video, but you have to take that little, the little nut back here, tighten this up onto that sensor by using that little wrench that they provided. And the rear says 22. That's totally acceptable. I was shooting for uh, 24 or 25, but 22 is good. Um, I mean, again, my tire pressure gauge says one thing, this says another, who knows which is correct. Uh, there's going to be some variances of uh, plus or minus two, but that looks good. So again, remember, come and tighten up both on the front and back, the little, the little nut here. And it locks that in place. Yeah, so I'm probably do a little bit of an adjustment on the back pressure, and then the front, and then, of course, and again, I'm reminding you, you need to tighten up, pull back the uh, sleeve here, tighten the nuts up onto these uh, sensors, and uh, you're good to go. All right. Anyways, I hope you uh, found this was helpful. It's kind of interesting. Um, man, kind of like a weird thing and not, uh, not as simple or, I guess, user-friendly as what I expected. It's a little bit of a hassle. Okay, everyone, we're going for a little test drive. Tire pressures, front is 19, rear is 24. Hopefully you can see that on the uh, screen here. So just a short drive. Uh, it's almost nighttime. As you can see, the sun is going down. So we're just going to take a little short drive uh, along the dirt road here. And... Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I think this thing's working pretty good. The uh, temperature is 40 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, which is accurate. I, I looked in my uh, external temperature that I have out my garage. It's about the same. So, now in theory, I don't know. It's kind of cold out, so. I'm not sure if the tires are going to get a little bit hotter, which should mean the pressure would increase. I'm not sure if that's going to happen because it is so cold out. So, but I just want to do a little test drive here and uh, see what happens. So I have to remember, uh, it was oh, I said at 1924 was the original temperatures or, or sorry pressure and uh, and the uh, tire temperature is 44 so we'll see what happens oh boy
and I just got my, my foot. I just got my foot wet. There. Dear goodness gracious. Okay, so I see the front tire temperature went up. Probably because I just got pummeled uh, in some ruts and holes. I mean, temperature happens when things get uh, compressed. Yeah, and I see the uh, rear temperatures. Yeah, it was at 24. Now it's at uh, 25. So we're at 20 and 25 now. So that's kind of interesting. And my foot is now at, uh, it was at about 55. Now that it's wet, my foot is at about, uh, oh, there's some deer. Okay, just take it easy. Oh, I'm gonna slow down. Just easy, guys. I'm not trying to get you. Oh, uh, yeah, so yeah, outside temperature, oh, down 40. 44 degrees and the pressure 20 and 25 so that makes sense we did a little bit of driving heating up the tires let me see if the deer are still here yeah they're still all out there I'm not sure if you could see them due to how the Sun is lift up my visor here there's like one two three four five one big one he's probably the boss there he's sitting saying you better get out here but yeah oh that's cool oh pay attention to also what's going on on the road but uh, yeah seems to be working And it'd be nice because, as I say, like, if you get if you're gonna get a flat tire, one of two things are gonna happen. You're gonna hit something, and it's gonna be flat, right? And the other thing that's gonna happen is that you're going to pick up something, uh, a nail, maybe barbed wire. Uh, even a pokey rock or something that maybe might slightly puncture your tire. And now, at least, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're going to see, hey, uh, I've been noticing my uh, tire pressure is at 20 and 25, and for some reason, my, my rear tire is now at 23, and then a half hour later, it's at, uh, you know, 20. And then you can say, hey, I think I have a problem here, and then sort of get back to a main uh, civilization road. That's my whole point to this. I, I mean, I'm not. Uh, what's the right word? I'm not uh, uh, tire pressure phobic. I don't really worry about it. That's kind of like the last thing I actually worry about. I have great confidence in the tires, and even if a tire goes flat, if you're not driving on really really bad terrain um, you can still drive on a flat tire you just have to take it easy but if you're caught on a flat tire out in the middle of nowhere and you have some serious stuff to go over uh, you're gonna be in trouble um, so kind of like that's why I I, don't know, I thought I would dabble in the uh, old uh, tire pressure thing because a lot of my driving I'm by myself so it's just one more thing to give me a heads up if something's going wrong and uh, because normally you have a slow leak so you have uh, plenty of time to drive tens or maybe a hundred hundred kilometers if it's a slow leak you don't have to worry about it you just get back to some sort of civilization where you can take care of the issue but you can't take care of it if you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's no one coming by to help you out so, okay, well, uh, I'm going to sign out here. Thanks for watching the video. 
please, please give me a thumbs up. That's all I ask. Thumbs up is awesome. Uh, it helps me out. Helps my channel out. Um, even if you're not going to subscribe or whatever, as I said, a thumbs up. At least, at least I know you like the video. 